check to make sure it's straight. It appears to be straight. So you wind up wire brushing it, which took the coating off. So now I'm just going to blast it. So these are CAD plated here. When you wire brush it, you take the coating off. These are steel, they're not uh, stainless like the civilian ones are. Good, good, gotcha. old, good old cheap steel. Stainless was needed for something else. So I'll take these and blast them and then we'll just start fresh. Um, this rubber here was worn out. Appears to be a little loose. It was going up and down. This other one had a washer over here, which looked like it was steel inserted, but it was actually a rubber washer when I popped it off. So I guess that held it so the st uh, stud here didn't hurt it. This one here didn't have the rubber on it, so it just squeezed the rubber. You mean the washer? Washer, so it squeezed the rubber out to one side here, and then you know, the bolt was free to go up and down, up and down, and it beat the hell out of it. This rubber is kind of petrified. So, the other one came out pretty easy. Let's see what this one's going to do. This one looks like it'll come out pretty easy, too. So it's just like taking off a shoe or putting one on. You do a little at a time. Make sure you put your finger in the middle of it so you get yourself right. So I'm just breaking it away from the surface. This rubber's so old it doesn't have any real bonding it so it's what about some uh, steel bushings and put a zerk on the top see this one just tore a little bit Whoop. trying to get this out in one piece so I can use it as a sample but it's rubber so it just seems like it just wants to tear right through it It's hard, but it's kind of like gummy. Studio ever just keeps breaking it away. Appears to be stuck on that side. There it goes. It's stuck on that side a little bit. Wouldn't let it come up. Stuff is just weird, weird feeling. It's just weird. These are rubbers. Like some gum, maybe they replaced them, who knows, somebody. No, I doubt it. It's just, it just whatever material, it's not 100% rubber, that's for sure. It's something else. It's really weird feeling. Maybe that's just what original rubber feels like. Yeah, after, who knows, you know, huh? 80 years, whatever it's been. All right, so they're out now, so we're gonna have to make up something to go in the hole here. I'm not sure if we're supposed to have a washer here or not. I uh, Maybe, I'd have to look in the book. So we'll look in the book. If so, we have to blast this one and then obviously we gotta get another one if it's supposed to be in there. So if we get some urethane, we can probably make out a chunk of urethane. Nylon will be pretty hard. Obviously any kind of a metal would be, wouldn't give any Flexibility. You gotta have some flexibility for it to go up and down and work correctly. If it was held solid here, it wouldn't. It yeah. Wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to move in and out. And be free. So we'll have to see if we can dig up. The McMaster car has a large selection of uh, materials. I'm sure they would probably ask me everything we can buy. But other than that, these are really nice. They're hardly worn at all. It's almost no wear on these things. They usually get really worn out. And they look flat. Yeah, this is really nice. Just the rubber's just old. What a shocker, right? So I'll go ahead and blast these, and we'll shoot them. Uh, we'll shoot them. Uh, what is this shit? Red phosphate. Phosphate from Rapco. Good stuff. It's phosphate primer. So that was the nut we just worked on. So we got it cleaned on, baked on. So now we're chilling it. Yeah. Go through multiple layers of heat around yeah, here. Yeah, no kidding. Where's those crappy bars you bought? 
Okay, here's our bars that don't seem to fit. Yeah, it doesn't fit here either. Okay, where's that crown nut at? Um, on the forks. Right there? Yeah. yeah here, you carry the hard part. Top to bottom? I believe so. Looks like it. It's into that deep. It's <laughs> <laughs> the bottom inch. The threads look kind of crappy right through there with the nut was rusting in there. Alright. Better than some, worse than others. It's worse than my NOS fork, but it's better than a lot of other ones I've seen. Okay, this is 237, 247, 243, 240. So what are you saying? It's not round. 230, 231, 232. So quarter is 250. So it appears we are 240 on the high end. So I would guess that the hole is probably supposed to be 250. Well, I'm thinking it's probably a lot under that. Let's go about 220. Ah, I was close. I was at 230. So it appears that we're only like 10 thou off to 15 thou. See? Mm-hmm. Some low to mid 30s. Let's see, this is 48. It's got a titty right there. Let's see a little spot right there. Mm -hmm. That's called a high spot. What a shocker. It's hard. That's why I like original parts. So tell these folks why that hole is not the right ID. Because they made it wrong. They're aftermarket and they're made wrong. Yeah. It's amazing to me they had, they could have done it right. Well, they were close. <laughs> See, this one almost goes in. Almost, but not quite. So it should just slide right on. And you tighten up your pinch bolts to pinch it. And your pinch bolts are not tight, see? And those are stock. Why is that thread not screwing in there very well? Oh. Thread appears to be a little that way right in there. What's this? Uh, thread lubrication, cutting oil. Yes? Mm, kind of. What would you say? Yeah, well, I know this is some killer shit here. It's called honing oil. Honing oil, all right. Which track. is finer than cutting oil. Lubricates better. Less wear on the tool for the machine tool. 
It's not a cutting fluid, it's a honing oil. Okay. I use it for everything. But basically just a lubricant. It does everything. I don't know why that didn't go right through, but... It does now. It appears to be a little bit freer than it used to be. And chase the other side? Yeah, it's good, but we'll just make sure. At Tatro Machine, we leave no stone unturned. <laughs> ah. Come out the other side. The quality good. control is just not what it should be, huh? Well, these are pretty good, but we're just a little off. Well, I was fortunate to get them. They were made in the USA. Took the sticker off. Where was the sticker made? China? Uh, that's a good question. I never thought of that. Couldn't get to the back of the sticker to see where the sticker was made. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think those have been in somebody's on USA? somebody's shelf for a while. Is that USA rust? You found those for me. Yep. Good old eBay. They were by it now. I forget how much they were. Yeah, it was expensive. Somewhere between four and five hundred. Probably. More of a higher number than low one, I bet. I think the bolt's bad, too. Now, these are the original rusty bolts, which are basically like metric now, because they're undersized. So we're going to keep using these. Gonna put well, what do you, you, are they available? Maybe. I got nothing wrong with the rusty bolts, as long as they work. OK, well, I'm trusting you. What you Ouch. You well, I'm not one of, I'm, you know. Some people are pickier than others. Well. There it is. It helps you get the right one. See, your rusty bolt doesn't break my die. It's a quality made piece of crap import tool. <laughs> like how I narrowed it down. But it holds the it holds the die. It kind of holds the die. We'll leave that loosely in that holding part. Okay. Did you want the other one? Nope, it worked good. Okay. The other one had all the rust cut off of it. This one had, uh, right at the very first three threads, it had a little bit of build yeah. up on it. I was keeping it from going in. Okay. We're good now. This one looks good all the way in. Anyway. Gotcha. So now it works like it's supposed to. We still have the problem that the front end doesn't go together because uh, the hole is 15 thou too tight. So you can either beat it on with a big hammer and run it. Well, we've come far enough now. Or we fix it. So which one do you want to do? I'd like to fix it. Oh. That's the hard way. See, this way is 223. This way it's 242, 246, see, 247. See, it'd be correct right there, but obviously something happened because it's smaller this way. 
It's out of round. So I guess when they cut the uh, slot in here, it, the metal pooch back on it. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of problem in here getting in the machine. It appears somebody's got some other crap in here. Not sure how that would happen. And my uh, tool. Trouble. Hold up. Just makes it, see? Perfect. These are big washers right now. So make sure we got clearance back mm -hmm. here. Two fourteen or so. We'll make sure it didn't pinch on us or do something like right and go mm -hmm. yeah go kooky on us. Yep. touch. That'll keep it from moving. See this bolt got loose. Mm-hmm. Because you're putting some stra weird stress on it. Yeah. So this one actually pinched. Yeah. This one stayed tight, so that means that one didn't that one's trying to open up. Okay. This one actually closed up. So that's gonna make this different. Right. Than Okay, look at a pound or two. Does the deluxe machine have that automatic? Oh yeah. All depends on what you want to spend. I either got left or right. Oh, oh really? Man. No kidding. Wow. I imagine. Oh me. Oh.
so the touches were too close. Out in there. That's the pinch. What numbers it on over there? Uh, what's that? What numbers it on? Uh, I can't tell. It's uh. Where's that? It's way on the other side over there. So it was over here. See, finger. The needle's over here. Right. So you split the difference halfway. I see. About there. Hmm. So, see, we're just under halfway this way. You go over there and you look at the needle, and it should be about the same. Over there, about halfway. This way here, we're off scale. scale again. So it's not, it's actually like it's like this. Mm -hmm. Two bars are not the same here. So I'm not sure why it's shifted that way. I have something to do with how the nut's holding it, I'm not sure. So it's pushed against the table below it maybe. It's hard to tell. Either way, it's not pushing very evenly, which I don't like. Obviously, there's some kind of a twisting action going on. So we're going to redo how we have that hold held down. So I'm going to do my wrench. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this all out and redo it. Now we need to come up higher. So I need some some big round bars with holes in them. Check our heights. What would they call those? Just spacers, huh? Did you make those? These are dabs. So these two appear to be the same height. So we'll put them on the bottom, we'll put these on the top. Put longer bolts and studs in here. Longer studs. And we'll see if we can hold these a little bit better. Current method is warping the bar, or the bar is already warped, I'm not sure, but either way I don't like it. So, so let me put that into there. Because that might be too long. Give me a stud next side there over there. Hopefully this will be more even. That may be a problem. And this one here. See we're hitting up here on the top mm -hmm. radius. So luckily we've got a smaller side to choose from, so we'll just flip it over on maybe. I don't know what I 
put in there. Can't get the height we need. Probably this one running out of room over here. But. See, I'm over having my look over mm -hmm. here. But we gotta come out this way a little bit, so we should be alright. See, I like to torque them, move them around a little bit. Right, to get them to e naturalize. Yes, and equalize where they wanna be. Pulling hard against it, which is good, it's not pinching that way. Okay, start to back and redo our center. We were close before, so we just move it until we hit. See, it's yeah. three that way, and it's 13. It's 10th aisle difference this time. It's more than that before. This one we're not even touching. Okay, the high spot is zero. So the high spot is zero. You split the difference. Nine, aren't we? That's fifteen. Well, you want to get to as close as you can so that you're not cutting too much out of one side. Fifteen over there, so looks like it. Keep the handle low. Yeah, right. The reason for that. Yeah. Can you think what it might be? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Catch you right where you don't want to be caught. It'll wake you up in the morning. All right. Right out. Make sure we got clearance here, so we're good. Not yeah, because it's going towards you. We don't have to move anyway because we're going okay. to be, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so after that blows through, it'll automatically shut off. See, it's going to go by another eighth inch more. We don't need an eighth inch. We'll need about that much more. So I'll set your stop. So you can set your diameter now. Point to do a dry run. A little bit of drag on the quill. See, you're not looking up here. That's right. a drag, so it puts a little pressure on things. Cutting speed is what? It's in the red. Yeah. Well, 
start dropping down about 20 or so it happens. Not hitting. Stop from the coaster. Okay, so we know we're not hitting right now. We'll give it another 15 pounds, 20 pounds maybe. touch yes it's just right. ever so slightly yeah right there you can hear it it should be hitting on this side about the same yeah 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 about a half inch, yeah mm -hmm. about a half inch wide yeah so if the marks are equal from side to side that means you're centered okay wow boy precision if one was this wide one was that wide you know you're off so you're off okay if everything is centered you know you're good <clears throat> okay so now we go that was we go another 10 thou so we go Ten. Actually, it's one more ten. And fifteen. There's fifteen thou right there. Yes, some thousands of an inch here. So we want fifteen more. And there's your new cut. Should be about you know, 35 to 38 would be a guess, but of course it's right back there where I can't see a damn thing. So it's around 30. Can't guarantee that because it's on the back side where I couldn't see. Lack of light and all that kind of shit. So we can go ahead and give it another 10. I know we're gonna have to clean up almost on one of these two sides, it's gonna have to hit to be on size. Okay. Even if I don't know what the cut size is, I know I have to go at least that far. The cutter appears to be pissed off at me. It does, because it's squealing? Yeah. It doesn't really matter what size it's supposed to be. If this doesn't go in the hole. No. You know, it's trying to go in the hole. So we're close. This one was a little bit smaller. See, it goes in. Yeah. This one here was a little bit tighter. It, it's trying to go, but not quite. Not quite there. It's just right there, though. It's just not, not going. So it's kind of important that it goes all the way on. So we're gonna give it five thousands. So right now we're on, we're on eighty-five right here. I should cut about four thou. Here's a good pissed off though. Now if I slowed it down slightly it might go away, but I was in a hurry. We're not production here at Tatro. Yeah, we don't care about the Look at that. That's a that's a palm press fit. So. That's pretty sweet. So that's a, Here, just go clunk. See, that spot it goes right in, see, because this yeah. one's not around. See, over here it's tight, yeah. right there. That's the sweet spot if it's perfect. Yeah. So if you go 90 degrees from that spot, it should be tight. And that's our tight spot. Oh, that's nice. But see, it goes on, though. Yeah, it does. So I'm all right with being tight as yeah, long as it goes as on. as long as it goes on. Now, if you want to make it where it goes on all the way around evenly without being tight, so, no, you, can actually, all, so you can rotate this better. Yeah, yeah. Then we gotta give a couple more thaw. But it's still, that's we're not gonna hurt anything though. It'll just be nice and snug. Well, it'd be nice if it would actually go okay. on. Okay. So I just barely touched it. Slow it down a little bit, see if the pissed off part goes away. So the pissed off part went away. Probably didn't cut squat either. See, that's our tight spot. See, how the tight spot isn't quite as tight as it used to be. The loose spot is right there. See, it's right there. Now, we got some uh, burrs on there. See us leaving a, yeah. a line right there? 
That's that spot right there that I didn't want to cut before. Mm -hmm. We need to get that off of the system a little bit. So I'm going to take the sharp file. Knock it down. It's like another one right there, possibly. See another one right there. A small one right there. There it is, folks. Knock the burrs off. Nice. Now, if we did that before, we probably would have cut it so big. So that's all right. It's right there. Technically, that's a screw up. That goes down as a screw up in my book. Oh. Should have done that first. Yeah, you're pretty tough on yourself. Oh well. Okay, so simple job took a little time. But now it fits correctly. When we're riding across the Sahara into Tobruk. And you can adjust the bearings easily now because they're not going to be bound up. Those tolerances will close up from the desert heat. The desert heat will take care yeah, of that? Yeah, I think so. I thought heat expands. Were these bikes ever painted tan? WLAs never were, no. Never were. They were always green, even, yeah. even for desert. Yeah, the Canadians were. Even the um, XAs, which went over the fight Rommel in the yeah. desert, they were still OD. I don't think they ever painted. The Germans were tan. I don't think they ever made it tan. They might have, but I'm not no expert on it. Well, then the ones that you XAs see are too. navy gray aren't correct either, are they? Navy is a, is a gray. That is correct. Oh, they some were, were navy gray? Navy bikes were gray. I'll be darned. Yes, they were gray. Now the knuckleheads though, which are basically Navy because they all went to Hawaii, as far as I know they were all OD, because they were considered Army, not Navy. But they actually had the UAs, and I have a brand new set of gas tanks that are gray, NOS set, they're gray. UA, now that was the shaft drive one, Harley. Nope. No, UA was what, the knucklehead? Oh, it's not UA. UA is U, uh, U it's a U, uh, UXA. It's a flathead U, oh. which is a low compression UL. And then A is for Army. Oh. The navies were UN. Oh. Hmm. But I don't think they ever actually made a UN. I think they were just all UAs, but they might have made some M's. I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody will correct me. I don't care. It goes around in circles either way. I don't like the looks of the U. Uh, the navy bike anyway. I think they're butt ugly. There's one guy that was in the 80s that had those bikes, and they're in all the magazines. Well, because they're just different. Now, some people might think that maybe he just made that up himself. But... Yeah, well, you never know. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of historians out there, and there's a lot of people that know or think they know. If nobody knows for sure, you can do whatever you want. That's pretty it. much, just, sure. Just because it's in a damn book doesn't mean it's true. So that, so the opposed... Cylinder ones were XAs, were they not? But that was the shaft drive. Yeah, they're shaft drive. They're basically a BMW. But that was a Harley thing, wasn't it? They oh. look just like a BMW. Just like the Indian was a... What was it? Uh, 581? 781? 581 was a Motoguzi. <laughs> they went the other direction with them. Wrong way. Oh, you got him. Yeah. What do you mean I'm going the wrong way? No. Boy, that sure is nice. Man. And these should basically be uh, just flush here, correct? Here, see the fall yeah. press fit? Yeah. Oh, that's great. So that's the, the fork is off by that mount. <clears throat> okay. So you're saying they shouldn't even be palm? Okay, see so how this goes evenly? Yeah. Slides? Yeah. Let's see when it hits that nut. See how the nut goes this yeah. direction when I hit it? Huh. It goes on. So the stem is slightly this way, would be my guess. But that's okay. So right now we're flush, which is roughly kind of about where they belong. Maybe a little bit low, but that's why those plates have a little bit Boy, of Boy, what a to nice them. Uh, setup. See how this one goes in there? There it goes. Got one little tight spot, that's that off center thing. So ideally this should just spin right down to the, 
for the base. But yeah, but that's, that's pretty nice and so, flush. Yeah, I'm up against it right now. Oh, that's great. The tin plate's supposed to be in here right now. Okay. You know, the, the titty and the tin plate goes in these holes right here. Right. So you have to rotate to where right. the hole lines up. That sets up your preload on your bearing. Yeah, no, the hole might line up on this side. That's why. Either way, it's right. Two holes. And that also serves as a lock for the nut, correct? No. No. Well, a nut couldn't go either way. The nut's jammed in. It's double jammed against each other. It's not going to come. Oh, okay. If you tighten the nut down, it ain't coming. You're right. Anyway. You're right. You're right. You're right. But and then the other part goes on top of here. Right. For the steering right. damper. So now everything seems to be uh, fitting correctly. Yep. And it's not requiring a big hammer to make it work. No. Even though that's how it was before. <laughs> and our front end still goes up and down because it works correctly. Boy, that's a beautiful setup. Rock arms appear to be a little bit free right now. So there, we'll get ready for the rack. Boy, I was impressed with the carburetor, but this is really great. This is better than the carburetor. Oh, man. Are you kidding? Now, we still got to deal with this hole over here, which I think is bogus. Now, these are supposed to be probably about up in this area here when you're on the bike. That's where it goes to right now. I think that hole is bogus, so we got to look into that here. So that's going to be our next thing. We'll go grab a fork and compare that. But for now, that's uh, that's how that looks. Wow. So, Boy, coming together. Now, are we going to blast these bars now? I think so. All the way down and paint them? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll have to blast them. Okay. So, all right, nice. So the next thing is we're going to check this hole. All right, cool. All right. Wow.